Well, welcome everyone. We're so glad to have you all join us today. We have some really awesome information that we're going to discuss that I think will be really helpful in your day to day lives and making sure that you get access to all of the news that we're providing to you. So my name is Sarah Brown, the opinion coordinator at the Arizona Daily Star. I am joined by Sarah Garrett Gasson, the editor of the opinion pages and David Fitzsimmons, the editorial cartoonist at the Arizona Daily Star. We also have some of our awesome coworkers that are joining us today with some great information. So we have Debbie Cornmiller, Samantha Munsey, and Mark Lowing. So some of the things that we'll be discussing today, Debbie's gonna talk, um, let me get back to my notes here. Um, Debbie's gonna talk about our e-edition and some of its different features and also newspapers.com. What is that? What it can be used for? How you can do some research with it? And then also uh, Samantha will be discussing our digital perks and we also have Mark Lowing joining us today and he'll be able to address any issues about uh, circulation things that have to do with our digital subscriptions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So if each of you, you're all co-hosts, would like to unmute yourselves and uh, do a little introduction of who you are. Um, but one more note, we will have time for question and answers on each of the subjects as we go along. So feel free to either raise your virtual hand when it comes time for that, or feel free as always to put your uh, questions in the chat and we'll make sure and get to them. So Debbie, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself first? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Debbie Cornmiller and thank you all for coming today. Um, I have been at the star now um, it's 41 years and it's the only job I've ever had the only place I've worked out of college. Um, I spent a decade writing, writing about maybe 10 or 15,000 headlines on the copy desk. I was the features editor and if you've been around here for a while, I ran um, a lot of the reader participation things. One year I counted 8,726 comic ballots. Another year I spent time watching flowers die just to see who had the freshest flowers in town. <laughs> lots and lots of fun. And then uh, I was the reader advocate for a decade. And um, I started right after um, our new editor and publisher changed the um, ad uh, stands on gun ads. Um, so that was lots of fun. I mean, I got the tail end of it, but Maria Parham took the brunt of that. And then this last decade I've spent um, in the digital space and, um, you know, we, we have done so many different kinds of things. And I can tell you that I've never had a better job because I never have had another one, but <laughs> Still, still, I have fun every day. It's a great place to work and I have a lot of fun. So um, I'm really looking forward to showing you what we have and hearing what you want from us and um, how I can help you. Take it away, Sam. Oh my gosh. How can you top the intro, Debbie? You did such a great job. I don't know, but you might be able to do it, Sam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to try. So um, I'm Samantha Munsey. I'm the digital editor for the Arizona Daily Star. I've been with the Star for nine years, um, and I started off as a digital producer uh, for Tucson.com, and I had like a tiny little cubicle space, and the only thing that I had to do with my job was make sure that stuff from the newspaper went online. Um, that's now automated. So I obviously needed to grow my skills in order to stay here. Uh, and it's been really great to kind of see how digital has just even progressed in the time that I've been here. Um, I also was a producer for our sister site and project, This Is Tucson, talking about what to do and sort of uh, events and fun things that are happening in town. And uh, more recently, I also was a product developer for the Stars Innovation Lab, where I did a lot of audience development work. So kind of really figuring out what our audience wanted in terms of digital products and then creating those things. Uh, I most recently just took the role of digital editor. Uh, I have been a digital editor, I think for about, I think almost two months, I think it's two months tomorrow. <laughs> so it's definitely been like a great challenge and uh, I just can't wait to share with you all, all of the great things that we have to offer with everybody's subscriptions today. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I know Mark is on. Did you want to uh, unmute yourself, Mark, and introduce yourself? 
Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Mark Lowing. I'm the circulation director for the STAR. i um, been here 14 years. I have overall responsibility for um, not only print circulation uh, through subscriptions and retail single copy sales, but also mm -hmm. digital subscriptions. Um, so I'm in charge of acquiring and retaining subscri subscribers um, and have all the financial responsibility on both the revenue and expense side that goes along with all that fun stuff. So that's the, you know, that's the fun part. Um, so as part of that, as I mentioned, digital subscriptions also fall under my umbrella. So I work super closely with the newsroom, um, just kind of make sure all of our efforts are aligned, you know, we're all rowing in the same direction. Um, just kind of here today to support Debbie and Sam and answer any questions that might come up from my world. They had reached out earlier this morning and said, well, what if we could ask this? What if we could ask this? And we just kind of decided, what if I just got on the call? So and we're so glad you joined us, but let's dive right in. Um, Debbie, do you want to start off and talk a little bit about the e edition and some of its features? Sure. And I will share my screen and I'm, I have an, um, a, a note here from Elaine, and I think I can help you. And um, if I can't, I will have Sarah and Sarah read me the question because I'm not so sure, even though I can multitask, whether I can do everything at the same time. So um, let me just give me a second to get where I need to be because I have a million tabs open too. And I'm going to share my screen uh, right now, maybe. And in the meantime, let me just say that where the tricky part on finding things is that not everything that's in the star is online and not everything online is in the star. So um, that is where I think we tend to get tripped up and I'm not getting my, um, just up to, I'm not getting my screen here. Okay, do you see that? We're what seeing you your home screen right now. Well, then that's not really very good at all, is it? <laughs> it's a pretty uh, sand dune, it looks like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, that was what my yard looked like before it rained. So um, give me just a second because I should be able to do this, Sarah. And I've done it a million times, but I'm not doing it right now. But anyway, so if you look what's in the star, page by page, we have stories. And all the stories in there from the AP, the Associated Press that we buy from them um, and the editorial cartoonists have appeared elsewhere earlier in the day or um, the previous day. So here I am still trying to do Would this. you like me to share my screen and you can walk me through what to press, Debbie? No, no, no I want to do my own. Okay. I, mean, I, can, I can do this. I mean, <laughs> where is my screen? Why don't why you talk a minute, Sarah, while I don't, so I don't feel nervous and start sweating. No problem. So today we're going to be able to answer. Oh, I, found, I found it. My hand's up. I found it. Okay. So um, let me tell you what's going on. So, so we, what I do is I start with Tucson.com every day. And so when I go to Tucson.com, I'm on the homepage, Tucson.com, right? I assume everybody can get there. And I'm assuming that you are subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, I'll talk to you in a different fashion. But every day that we have the, it's up here in the corner, it says today's e-edition. And it also says print edition. And under that, this what's called the hamburger, that has a link to it too. So if you go in today's edition, so I'm gonna click on Arizona Daily Star. You can see today's story. Do you see on the left, you see TUSD to require masks for all students, staffers. Do we all see that? Yes. Okay. So uh, this is the, the e-edition. And what happens is we take today's paper and it is converted to PDFs and put in our e-edition. And from there, if you're looking, this is where you're going to find your editorial um, columnists because we don't have the rights for many of the national ones to run online. So the way you look at this is you've got TUSD, you can call up the story, click on it and you can read the story. Then if you want to share it with somebody, you use the share button. 
You can print it, you can share it, or you can download it. If you want to share it, you click on this and I decide I want to email it to my friend. I just takes me to my e Do you see my um, email? Uh, no, and it may not show that because you just selected the one screen to view. So it'll okay. only show us the main screen, but what will pop up will, it kind of automatically generates an email. Right, correct? that's right. And you all you have to do at that point is type in the email address of who you want to send it to. Right. So that is the way, the easiest way to um, to send from the e edition. And that's why if you are looking for a headline, searching a headline that you saw in today's paper, you're not going to see it online because it, it it may have a different headline. We've written a different headline on it. We've trimmed the story. We put a different photo with it. Um, and it's the same way with the columnists. But what I think is pretty swell, and it's part, something I do every day, is that we take the paper, and here you can go, here's A1, A2, and down here in this bottom left-hand corner, it says the E-Edition Extra. And we put extra stuff in that E-Edition every day. And so uh, let me show you what we have today. Here's the, here's the opinion. And I can stop and read any of these, these um, stories. But what happens is we put in extra stories. Here's E edition extra page, A13. So here's one new story. Here's another. These are usually in-depth or additional stories. And then here's another one on should you sign or co-sign with your child? So and these articles never make it in print. They're they never, make it, to they the never e make it in print. They're only in here. And they're not going to be online either. These are completely exclusive. Now, when I get to the sports department, so here's the edition Tucson region. You can stop and read any of these. Um, and I do this on my phone as well. And on my phone, it's really swell because when I'm using my phone, I can get each of the individual comics to read. I don't have to read them in a, in a grouping, but in sports, every night we have, here we are on a seven, an extra page. And that is the um, late baseball scores. This is where you'll also find in the E-edition, um, our late, are you a football coverage? Are you a bat baseball, basketball coverage? Anything that starts after probably um, five o'clock in the evening, well, you'll find it on the E-edition and not in print, at least not on the same day. So Debbie, when you clicked on the E-edition in the sports section versus the, or the extra E-edition versus on the front page, are those different extras depending on which page you clicked on the extras? Like um, one on sports, is that sports related? But then the one on the front page was, you know, just maybe. In, in, the, in the front page, I, I use a, a variety of ones. Like on Saturday morning, there's a kid's news page. Um, right now I'm debating whether to use a story on celery. Celery, can you believe the value of celery? Six calories per stock, but it, it, whether to put that in the e-edition or whether to put that on the food page, because we have choices. And um, so in the, at the end of the A section, it's usually one page or two page up to four stories um, of just news um, features. Maybe it's a, um, if there's an Oscar story, maybe um, it's a big Oscar preview or whether it's July's best movies to watch. If there's book reviews, um, car reviews, we just put them at the end of the A section and just add on the, to the numbers. So what you can do with the E edition. So here, here's how you can read the, um, the sports. But we'll do, we'll do that with, um, we might be doing that if we're doing any other reviews as well. But looking over here on the right side, you can look at your pages like this, and then you can click on the ones you want to download. If you want to send the whole page to somebody, or if you want to keep it, or if you want to clip it, and then um, you can um, go into where it says additions. Do you see this additions right here? Mm -hmm. That additions is where you can get the last month's papers. So if you miss something 
or you can search the archive. And if you're searching the archive, our archive goes back to 2007 here, July of 2007, July 6 to be um, exact. And you can search for whatever you want. Um, and these are all PDFs of those, those pages. And so if you look, that's almost, uh, we're going on now 14 years worth of papers that you can search. Um, not all of the, some, uh, not all of the ads are in there for the ads. Like for example, the, the Walgreens ad, if there's that circular, you get that would not be in there, but parade would be there. Um, our special uh, projects, all of our basketball preview sections, um, I've worked on the um, book festival now every single year, and I'm the one that puts together that special section. Um, and so that you could go back and see, you know, authors that have been here or the, the various critters over time. Um, other special sections are like Saddlebag Notes is on here every, every month if you want to know anything about Saddlebrook. And um, that's a 48 page uh, broadsheet special section that's distri distributed across um, Saddlebrook. And then um, also, if you're interested, if you were ever reading the STARS um, science special section, you know, the spotlight on the UA College of Science, we did that for more than a decade. They're all here as well. Um, it's just a very easy search. You so come one, up with, what? One question uh, related to what you're talking about, can you, that's in the chat here from Leslie, can you share the extra articles just like you would a regular article? Like, so can you print it, PDF it, email it? Everything. Absolutely. Okay. And then one other question from Elaine, how did you get the column on the right side of the screen to get the option to click on additions? Well, let's just look at that. Let me go back to my additions and I'll go today. And so what I did was I clicked on a story. Okay. Clicked on, when I click on a story, that is when I get the options to share or print. And one thing I did not mention, and I just got a call about this today that Mark answered, was that it will actually read it to you. Now, it's a little clunky on the reading, but it does read it to you. You can also make the type, type smaller. God knows why anybody would want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can make it a lot bigger, too. And so um, those, those are really, I think, important ways to read the paper. And uh, this is something you can take with you. Um, I, I read the paper from San Diego last week, and my husband read it on the iPad. Um, you can, uh, go, going down this list, um, there is a tutorial on how to use this, and I can drop the, um, or Mark, why don't you drop the um, a link to the tutorials into the chat, and this is my, this is my favorite, and a lot of people don't, don't see it, but see this puzzle piece? Yep. Sarah, what do you think that puzzle piece means? Oh, man, I think it's what all of our readers buy the paper for. <laughs> It's the puzzles and the games, yeah. <laughs> okay, so so let me click on this and let's see what you can see. So this is just really great. And this is for subscribers. So you, you sign in. And so you've got your crossword puzzle. Uh, you've got your Sudoku. You've got your Ken Ken. I mean, it's it's really a, a nice, nice feature. So the sign in at the top, if you were to click that when you were signed in on the e-newspaper, It'll, you still have to sign in again here? I, you know, I didn't, this was something that kind of caught me by surprise right now. Okay. I will get back to you after um, Sam is through talking. Okay. But it looks like there's a lot more even here than in the paper. Yes. So that's cool. All righty. And so here, like here's Sudoku, play. Let's see whether I can play it. I mean, there's an advertisement beforehand. Great, but you then then after after the advertisement, you yeah, will, you'll you'll get to play those games. 
Now, so, can you print them if someone were to want that? Yep, you surely can print them. Okay. But those are beyond the one, those, those are not the same ones that you're seeing in the print version every day. Those are additional ones. Okay, so you won't necessarily. It's a package that they bought just for online. Okay. Very cool. Hey, All righty. Hey, Sarah, it's Mark. Um, can I just address two of the questions in the chat real quick? Yes, please. Um, just to clarify, one question was, how do you get the column on the right side to get to those options? If you, once you click on an article or a story from the paper, that column should show up. So it'll be there as you click on a, on a story. Okay. And then the second was, whoops, where did that go? Something just. Oh, I just done shared my, want me to share again? No, no, that's okay. I just, uh, lost my chat. Um, well, that's okay. I can remember it. The other question was, is it inevitable that uh, newspapers go 100% digital? Um, probably at some point in the future, um, but I don't see that happening for many, many, many years, 100%, because there are so many folks that are still into the ritual, um, especially of the Sunday paper. Um, I just don't see the print edition going away. Um, for quite a while. What I could see in the coming years as I could see, and I know some other papers are starting to experiment with this, eliminating certain days of print. So, you know, they may no longer print on Tuesday and Tuesday is only available through e-edition. Um, I think that's a long way away. Um, we have no plans for that right now locally. Um, so I think we're gonna be good for a while. <laughs> So here's what I like. Here's the comparison I like to make is that my dad grew up in the uh, 50s and the 60s, and he could buy a cup of coffee for a nickel. Maybe he could pay, pay it, went, went for a dime and then it went to be went to a quarter and then Starbucks came around and now we are all drinking coffee and paying five dollars for it. Coffee was not always this valuable or this hip. And, you know, maybe that's what's happening with newspapers is that everybody read newspapers. They've come a little bit unfashionable, but now I think they're going to come back and people are going to pay big money for, for, for newspapers. I mean, if you buy the Sunday New York Times, what is it now? $10? If you're buying it on the stand, um, you know, and I can say, gosh, I remember when I could buy it for a dollar in New York, but, you know, um, it, it, it just comes and goes. And you look at how people are reading their books, you know, using Kindles, but books haven't gone away at all. And I think, you know, in many ways we cherish our books more now than we ever did. Um, and, and if you go someplace to sale, for, the, for sale, um, people just have, have tons of books and they're buying them. I mean, they're just buying them and buying them. And I think newspapers are just going to be the same. I mean, it, it's that ritual in the morning. It's that, whether it's coffee or cereal, or juice or tea, you sit down with your, your paper. And even if you've got a computer or a phone or an iPad, I think that there is that experience that we all love and cherish. Okay, enough of me. Definitely. Well, I think that covered the e-newspaper really well. But of course, if you guys have further questions on that, feel free to drop them in the chat. And then if we have time towards the end, we can always come back to them. But let's have Sam talk to us a little bit um, about some of the digital perks. This has a lot to do with what we're kind of talking about. We're trying to give you more and more and more. So let us know about some of the stuff that we may not know exists, Sam. Yeah, of course. So um, the same way that we kind of have the print e-edition where we have some stuff that's very exclusive to the e-edition. We have tons and tons of content that's specifically related to our digital stuff, right? Um, you can't put a video in a newspaper, but we do have plenty of local videos that you're able to watch on our site. Um, you can't put, as much as I would want to, all of the photographers' wonderful photography about nature and the monsoon season in one paper, uh, but you can look at a fantastic gallery that we put together online almost every day, um, especially with this monsoon season right now where, uh, what was it, like the wettest monsoon season in July? That's incredible. Uh, everything is so green right now. Uh, and uh, in, addition, uh, in addition to all of those things, 
Two, uh, we are now currently offering digital, um, subs or not digital subscriber only content, but subscriber only content. So it's content that you're able to read if you have, you know, a subscription to the star, whether it be print or digital, that is solely designed for our readers. And uh, what we typically do to kind of figure out what creates a subscriber only article is um, to figure out like, is the story relevant to our readers? Does it provide some more in-depth context? Is it something that we think they're gonna love? And those articles you're only able to access if you have a subscription to the star, either in print or in digital. So uh, one of the things you're gonna wanna do if you haven't already is activate your digital subscription account. And I am going to post a link here uh, if you have a digital subscription, chances are you have already activated your account. And we have plenty of print subscribers too who have already activated their account. But if you have not, I uh, really insist that you do because you're going to be missing out on a lot of great content if you don't. And one of the other reasons why you're going to want to activate your account is that if you go on to Tucson.com uh, without having your account activated, you will only get to read two stories before you butt up against a paywall. And we really want to make sure that you're able to read all of the wonderful coverage and content that you get with your subscription. So if you have any questions about activating your account, uh, like please let us know, obviously Mark is on the call right now as well, that he, uh, he and myself and Debbie can like walk you through that process. Um, let me go ahead and do a screen share so I can show you some of the great stuff that we're offering too. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. And that subscriber only content that you're talking about, this is in-depth coverage that like you're not going to get on the TV news or other news outlets. This is specific things like you said that we've researched that we know that our readers are interested and wanted. So this is truly stuff you're not going to get anywhere else. Yes, uh, it Exactly. It is a lot of in-depth coverage that you're not going to find up anywhere else. It's stuff that we feel like, you know, our readers will be super invested in. Um, for example, there was a story that I was very invested in. Uh, there was a story about how, you know, the Poblano hot sauce company uh, shut its doors last summer. And it was very, it was very devastating to me in terms of where am I going to get the hot sauce that I've been eating for years. And then somebody came out with like a duplicate hot sauce that doesn't taste the same, but has a very similar label. And then the old hot sauce company that closed its doors came back. And now we have these two dueling hot sauces, right? Like you're not going to find that coverage anywhere else about people keeping tabs on our hot sauce community and, uh, and, <laughs> and, you know, putting some resources towards listening to um, our readers in terms of like what they want to hear about this coverage. So it's uh, a lot of stuff pertaining to that. Um, a lot of dining and like real estate news is also kind of subscriber only content because we want to make sure that our subscribers are getting that information first for our community. Um, so yeah, it all kind of starts with activating your account though. So uh, if you go on to juicecom slash activate, you will land on this page right here uh, where you will put in your first and your last name and then the email that your uh, account is associated with. And then you're going to create a password and then redo it and then you're in that's um, you'll get like a confirmation email saying that like your digital subscription uh, has been or the, the digital part of your subscription has been activated and you're ready to go. Um, and I can go ahead and show you like a little tour of what we have so far today. So we talked a little bit about videos right so with our coverage on a daily basis, we have a producer whose uh, big job is to go and find videos that we want to put up on the website that reflects our community and what's going on locally. And today, uh, our producer was able to find video of elephants playing at the Reed Park Zoo with all this wonderful rainy weather. So you're able to watch um, like this video in addition to all of the other videos that we have on the site. Um, the easiest way that I like to go and kind of look at the content or the daily new video content that we have in addition to galleries is just going on to tucson.com and then scrolling all the way down. And you'll see a little block that says photo and video. And this feeds all of our most recent local 
uh, gallery photos and video that we have for the day. So uh, you can see we have this great video of the elephants playing and we also have uh, the first day of school. It was the first day of school for TUSD. Um, ANFI, I think we all started last week. So we have a gallery of um, people getting ready for the first day of school. We have uh, some breaking news. So in addition to video that we provide, you know, of elephants playing or maybe our more longer in-depth video coverage, we also provide some breaking news coverage. Um, when you subscribe to the STAR, you're also subscribing to sign up for a lot of the breaking news coverage that may or may not end up in the paper, depending on what's going on for the day. And if you are activate, if you activate your digital subscription, you're able to get that breaking news before it shows up in the paper, which is really great. Um, you're able to see a lot of that coverage get developed in real time. And that uh, information is always provided at the top of our website of what's going on today. And also uh, today, so um, let's see. Okay, so it looks like um, our breaking news today is actually gonna be like in our latest section, um, but if it was something more recent, it would appear to the top of the page. You can also see on our website too, this is the subscriber only content that we were discussing. So all of these stories right now are currently for subscribers only. And if you click on the special link right here, it will take you to our subscriber only page where you'll be able to read more sub for subscriber and subscriber only content. Um, I also wanted to send everybody a link to this right here. It's tucson.com slash subscribers. And this actually goes a little bit more in depth as well uh, in terms of all of the stuff that we offer. There's a ton of it. Uh, Debbie mentioned puzzles. We also send out a cookbook every month to digital subscribers. Our editor, Jill Spitz, uh, sends out a subscriber only newsletter as well that talks and gives a recap of all the stuff that kind of happened the past month uh, at the star and all the coverage that you should keep tabs of. So if there's anything that I forgot to mention today, uh, feel free to take a look at this value kit and you can look around and see other things uh, in a little bit more depth of what we provide for our readers. Um, I, I wanted to just mention something about subscriber only content. And first, I, I want to, again, I want to thank you for being a subscriber. And the way the internet has developed, and it, I saw it play out in our own newsroom, is that when we first got computers, we encouraged everybody to play solitaire. So they would get comfortable with their computers and they would learn to embrace, you know, embrace the computer and get rid of the pencil and paper. But what happened was then after about a year, everybody was playing solitaire and we weren't getting much work done. And so the, the company cracked down and said, wait a minute, I'm not paying you guys to play solitaire because by that time we were playing gin. So this is what's happened on, on the internet is that Tucson.com, we, we used to be started and we gave all of our news away for free because we wanted people to get comfortable coming to us, understanding how the internet works, how to find their stories, blah, 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 blah. But we gave it all away for free. And so what we've tried to do now over the last couple of years is to say, wait a minute, we have people who are paying good money for the same information in print. Let's, let's figure out a way to charge people to do that online and so um you know we started out with what what um sam said was a, a paywall so first you, you got unlimited stories for free every month and then it went to 20 and then it went to 10 and then it went to 12 no then it went to five then it went now it, now it's at two so we'll give you that opportunity to read two stories for free every month Otherwise, you're going to have to pay up like everybody else does. And we are identifying what we think of as some of our best and most interesting stories as subscriber only. We've only been doing it now for a couple of weeks and seeing whether that will cause people to um, you know, open up their wallets. And we're finding that it actually is working. Um, and so that it, it, it's sort of like you know, the freeloaders are now having to pay for part of the bills. And what are the bills for us? I mean, you know, I, I'm your neighbor, Sam's your neighbor, Mark's your neighbor. 
we have a house, we have dogs, we have cats, we buy cars, we go to the grocery store, we support local businesses. We do all the things that you do. And we're really grateful that you support us so that we can have families, have jobs and have the things that we want. But now it's being spread around a little more fairly, I think. And so Leslie has a question in, for, for you, Mark. Um, how can a family share a digital subscription like they share the printed newspaper edition? Um, <clears throat> boy, there's a way to do it. And it's been so long, I can't recall. Um, let, me get, let me get back to you on that. Because I know I've got myself, my wife, and my son set up on mine. And you can have up to five or six different people on it. I just don't recall the exact process so let me let me get back to you on that right i mean my process it, it maybe it's the wrong process is that my husband uses my sign on but i don't know that that's 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 the way you're supposed to be doing it and then can't you have this about you've got the the daily pandemic information um every sunday we have graphics in the paper that put the the pandemic um measurements in some focus on how it's it, how we are doing as compared to when the pandemic began, um, and that runs in the B section, and it's usually um, about midway into the um, into the B section, and it's a set of six graphics. And those um, graphics and information also get pulled onto the website as well, so. You're right, Kent, like in addition to the daily stuff that we provide, we do uh, provide those graphics and information to whenever print runs it. And, yeah. you know, that's just, that gives you just one example. I mean, th those um, graphics take to find the information, to compile the information, to put it in a graphic, to get it checked, to put it on a page, to get it checked again. I mean, that's just hours and hours of work. And we're a little bit like a re redundant uh, factory and that every story we have, we, that we do, I mean, it has, you know, you talk to an editor about it. And then after the, um, af after you, talk with an editor, then comes the, you do some reporting, you talk to your editor some more, you turn in a story, the editor then sends it back to you for revisions, then it, then we get it budgeted, then a copy editor reads it, then it goes on a page and the page editor reads it, and then we read a proof of it. You think, oh my God, how could they ever make a mistake when those things happen? We do, <laughs> but I mean, it, 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 everything we do, we put in a lot of redundant checks and, and the, that fact checking that doesn't make sense um, is, is just a really important part of what we do. And it just takes a lot of time. Yeah, and um, you know, while we're talking about the, the COVID updates, um, I would like to say that if you go onto our website every morning we update uh, right here where it says updates Tucson area coronavirus developments and then the date. But if you click on this, this is every single story that we've ever written about the pandemic and any sort of research resources that we provided people um, from the start of the pandemic up till now. So if you ever kind of felt like you missed out on some coverage um, or if you ever felt like you needed some more context into what's happening, this is a great place to start. I check this um, every morning uh, and every afternoon just for my own personal uh, knowledge, but this is a great place to start if you want to um, get some more coverage or you weren't sure if we ran anything in particular about uh, coronavirus information. We have a question here from Alan Gillette. Um, I'm not sure if I quite understand what he's asking, but he says, can someone walk me through how I can download the paper to my device? The offline icon does not seem to appear on my tablet. So I mean, are you asking Alan, and you can unmute yourself if you'd like, if you like, you want to download the entire paper as a PDF, or could you maybe clarify your question for us? Um, yeah, that would be fine. Uh, what, what you're all going through Tucson.com, but I, I use, uh, I, I guess it's the Arizona Daily Star app uh, to read the paper. I don't know if there's a difference between the two of them. And 
uh, for some reason, it would be nice sometimes to be able to download the paper so I can take my tablet and read it where I'm going to the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not <clears throat> able to seem like to do that because I do not see, I, I, mean, I looked in the help section and uh, there was no uh, you know, offline uh, icon that I could click. Alan, this is Mark. Which kind of tablet are you using? Um, iPad, it's, Kindle? It's a it's a Samsung Galaxy. Okay. I, I'm a Kindle guy, so I only really know how to use. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kindle. That that I was hoping that was going to be your answer because I I could have uh, answered. No, because um, I'm but, on the I'm on the page where I can select whether it's online, uh, offline or roaming mode. Right, so within the E edition, so, and you're talking about the E edition specifically, correct? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that across the bottom of my Kindle, when I'm in the E edition and I'm in that day's edition, there's a, a button on the bottom that says download uh, for, for offline viewing, but I don't know what that's gonna look like on the, on the Android. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't want to waste your time on that, but because it's probably device uh, uh, conditional. So uh, I'll, I'll just keep looking, but thanks. Thanks for your help. Alan, um, can I, I'm sorry, can I recommend if you'd like to email me offline, um, okay. then I can, I can dig into that and email, uh, email you the answer back or get somebody in touch with you that can. Okay. Where, where's the email? Or are you going to put it on the chat thing? Sure. I'll, I'll put it in there right now. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. And then the other was there was an earlier question about how to set up additional folks on your in your family uh, with the account, and I looked at that real quick. It's super easy. Um, what you do is when you're on Tucson.com, you go to the top right, and there's a little person icon. Um, and if you want to drop that down, Sam, there you go. You press Manage Account. Breath. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Well, once you get logged in yeah. and everything, um, there's a list of activities on that page. And one of them says share digital access. And you click on that and it'll walk you through the process. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I have. Um, but that's have what it is. Yes, I have a Gannett account. So uh, like the stuff that I'm able to access on the site is pretty limited. Um, which is why the login isn't working. Right oh, now. okay. Yeah. But we tried, we tried, I, I was holding my breath the whole time. <laughs> Hoping it would work. No, that's great. Thank you so much. We got that answered. Um, we have another question here from Mary Ganapol. She's asking, do you use a third party outsourced group to answer questions via phone? I got someone one time, they gave me the wrong information, said the online paper was always exactly the same as the print paper. Um, I can answer that. Um, the answer is sort of. Um, so our customer service is, is handled through Gannett, who's one of our corporate partners. As you probably know, we're, we're half owned by a company called Lee, and the other half is Gannett. Um, Lee sort of has oversight of our newsroom activities, and Gannett has oversight um, for our more operational activities. Part of that is our customer service. Um, Gannett made the corporate decision a few years ago to outsource customer service um, uh, to, to, to a vendor, um, and they chose to manage our business out of one of their call centers in the Philippines primarily. They also have call centers in the States that handles certain issues based on, um, based on your problem. So it is possible, um, yeah, that, that you talk to somebody um, in a different location. It is also very possible that um, it, they gave you misinformation. They handle a couple hundred different newspapers and they're reading off of scripts. Sometimes if they don't know the answer, they kind of shoot from the hip, unfortunately. Um, also, anything that we do that's different from what, what the other Gannett papers do gets a little bit tricky for them because it's tough to tell somebody Okay, well, for the, for these 190 papers, here's the answer. But for Tucson.com, it's a different answer. And I think we we may be, be the only paper that puts additional content into our e-edition. 
Um, I'm not sure that Gannett papers do that. So I, I could see that happening. So I'm sorry for that. And I hope that answers your question. It did answer my question. Thank you, Mark. And You're on, on those extra pages, um, that's the experiment that we started here in Tucson. And um, because you know, our, parent, our news parent company, Lee, offers those um, as ready-made stories already designed and packaged in, in, in a many, often in a very clever or fancy way. And so we started that here and uh, we're a test site and they expect that they will roll something similar out to all the enterprises newspapers um, sometime in the next year or so. And that would be what another, I don't know, maybe 60 or more newspapers, but it's something we started because it, it seems like if we have the limitations of a of how many pages of newsprint we're using, but just like the website, the e-edition is unlimited. And one of the things I did not mention that's really cool about the e-edition is that uh, most of the time, and it's not today, but most of the time, we have a link to what we call the circulars. So if you want to see every circular that's out in any publication in Arizona, and sometimes you can do it in other states, you can go see those. So you can see the Walgreens ad or the Target ad, because a lot of, the, lot of those Sunday ads are targeted to specific zip codes. Um, for example, when there was a Kmart, Kmart did not want to um, put their insert in the paper for people to read in Marana because there wasn't a Kmart in Marana. They, want, they only thought their shoppers came from the five mile radius of a Kmart store. So they only wanted the, um, the ad in those papers. But you can see in the circular will be there tomorrow if you'll take it if you have a chance to look at it, and you can and if you want to see all the grocery store ads all together on any given day, if you don't want to wait until Wednesday to see them in the paper when when they are in the paper, you can see every single ad. Thank you. And I'll add to that, Debbie. That th my favorite feature of that being able to see the circulars is that it, it's searchable. Um, yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm almost always looking for a sale on Kingsford charcoal. So it's much easier for me to just go in there and, and search that, um, you know, because I will not pay, you know, over over $16.99 for the 20 pounder. Um, I refuse. So that always helps me, uh, always helps me find what I need. It's a cool feature. All right, so, so far we have talked, um, kind of summing up a point that Leslie put in the chat. We have a lot of different options. You've got the printed newspaper, you've got the e-edition, you've got Tucson.com, and you've got the apps on your cell phone or your tablets, but there is another thing we offer, and Sam was going to talk to us about our various newsletters and what those are all about and what you might be interested in them. Yes, so uh, we do offer quite a number of newsletters, both a mix of local and stuff that uh, we get provided through um, Lee, which is really great. Uh, the ones that tend to be very helpful to me just as like a user is our top five newsletter. So in our top five newsletter, you get sent the top five stories of the day in addition to a link to our e-edition for that day. Um, it's a really great newsletter to just kind of peruse whether or not you want to open up the e-edition or just kind of take a look at the stories that are going on within uh, the newsletter itself and kind of click out to some articles. Uh, if you are a subscriber to the Star 2, you also get uh, our editor Jill, Jill's uh, subscriber only newsletter, which is really great. I kind of talked about it previously, which um, is really a fun newsletter to kind of read. She really sort of recaps the stuff that all of our great journalists are doing, all of the wonderful work that are getting put together and um, some stuff to kind of have subscribers look ahead for a little bit. So an example of that is we were getting ready to launch our uh, e-edition cookbooks. So in that newsletter, she was able to give readers a heads up that they were gonna be getting some cookbooks in their email, which was really exciting. And we got a lot of great feedback from people who uh, enjoyed reading those or just hearing about them. And another 
newsletter that we uh, that we have that's local that is really a fun thing to not only read but put together is our gardening newsletter. So uh, we have a reporter who is solely focused on producing our gardening newsletter to provide some information specifically to our desert gardeners. Uh, and that newsletter uh, is really great because she'll tell you when to plant things, um, what stuff to kind of look out for in terms of running a desert garden. And uh, she also provides feedback from our readers. So if you read this newsletter and you have like a specific gardening question, you're able to, uh, you know, write a reporter and, and Dominica uh, will email you back some tips. A way that you can have access to all of the newsletters that we have is what Debbie is showing us right now, which is if you go to tucson.com slash newsletters. Um, we also have another great local newsletter called Tucson Time Machine. And that newsletter is curated by our producer, Jesse Telez. And he uh, picks kind of like a topic pertaining to Tucson that uh, has like some really great uh, local history to it. And we'll go into our archives and find some photos, uh, some really great, yeah, with the some really great photos of the past. Uh, we'll look not only in the Arizona Daily Star archives, but our Tucson Citizen archives to kind of break down uh, what you're looking at. And a lot of stuff typically tends to pertain to what's going on. So for example, our last uh, Tucson Time Machine newsletter was about um, the great flood in the 80s, just in reference to all of the water that we got this past month. So it's really great to kind of take a look at Tucson's past and sort of reflect on what's happening now in addition to that. Um, Debbie kind of pulled up an example of that, but if you go to tucson.com slash newsletters, Debbie, if you don't mind just like dropping that link in the chat, you can take a look to see all of our offerings. Um, we also have a great sports newsletter that is put together by our um, sports reporters. And that one's really wonderful as well. If you are a fan of reading Greg Hansen's work, that's a great place to get all of his coverage in your inbox um, without doing much other than logging onto your email, which is really great. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. So what I'm getting from all of this is there's a lot more news that we're providing than is just what is in the newspaper. So it really depends on how you prefer to get your news. But if you get the print subscription, you automatically have a digital subscription. So why not take advantage and activate it and get all of this extra video, galleries, content, the e-newspaper. Um, so there, there's just a lot more out there and we hope that you guys can, we've made it a little clearer today so you can take advantage of it. So we're gonna transition a little bit um, and we had mentioned we were gonna discuss a little bit about newspapers.com. So Debbie, if you could tell us what is that and what might we be, why might we be interested in uh, checking it out? So, so a project that I just finished last year and I, I mean, it took me a long time, but what I, what, what we've done is that all of the Arizona Daily Star going back to 1879, we're really, our birthday is 1877, but we lost the first two years of the paper, but going back to 1879 is um, on newspapers.com. It's a subscription service. So, I mean, you, you're pay that separately from the star, um, but if you need to go back beyond the 14 years that are on the archive um, with the um, e-edition, newspapers.com has all of our pages as well as the Tucson citizens. They have a seven day free trial, but it's fascinating what you can find on there. Um, I'm not from Tucson. I have an unusual last name, Corn Miller. I Googled that and I found out that my mom got bumped in a car right, right before I was born. Um, you can Google your address and see what, um, who lived there because we used to always put people's addresses. I mean, if you gave birth, you had your, your um, address was in the paper. If you got married, your name was in the paper. If you had a child, the mom and the dad's name was in the paper. Um, you know, a lot of old time kinds of things. And um, if you don't, if you're not interested in Tucson, you can get other papers as well. I believe they have somewhere on somewhere around, I think it's, um, 
1400 newspapers that they have and they're across the world i mean so they've they're working on the german american uh, newspapers right now um and you can find um, Canadian um, newspapers. And I mean, I found some birth records from some of the British uh, papers because my mother is English. But for the star, I mean, I use it for, for example, we're, going, we're coming up on uh, the, the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 bombing. And at that, right shortly after that, the star um, did a human flag. We had 15,000 people come to TEP with red, white, and blue shirts, and we made a flag out of it. We worked with TEP and a, a, a TV station, a radio station, the, the U of A uh, marching band coordinator coordinated the, the scene, and it was hot as heck that day, but we got a picture of, of that but I wanted to see how, you know, the details on um, how, how, how did we get that picture? Who was involved? What did it look like when we printed it? And I went to, and I went to newspapers.com and I was able to download that. And since you were all so kind today to come, if you email me with your birth date or any birth date that you're interested in, I will send you a birthday that you're the front page of the star from the day you were born or somebody else was born. And let me drop, I'll type in my email just right now, but um, I would be happy to do that as a thank you for coming and joining us today. Thank you so much for that, Debbie. So we are winding down on our time. So we thank Debbie and Mark and Samantha so much for all of this information as Kent put in the chat, he's like, it's too much for me to process. So I need to watch the video later. So uh, the video will be available on our website. All of our chats are always on tucson.com slash opinion. On the right hand side, we have a tab that's uh, chats. And so you can go back through and check out any of those all the time. And I see Debbie's got her email in the chat as well as Samantha. And I have a question, are you ready? Of course. Um, I was just going to say any last words that you guys wanted to share before we. I, I do, of course. And so I just wanted to say, you know, there's there's been some confusion in the community about local news. And if you look at the Arizona Daily Star, the people who make the decisions of what goes in the paper all live here in Tucson. They're all your neighbors. Our local, we have our local reporters live in Tucson. Howie Fisher does not live in, in, in Tucson, but he lives in Phoenix because he covers the legislature. But we make those decisions. We decide what stories we're going to run. And while our printing press is no longer in Tucson, we control everything that, the way the paper looks, we, we, we choose the stories, we send, um, I mean, we send a plate to, to Phoenix and then the papers are driven back to us. But um, it's a really local uh, decision of what we're going to do each day. And um, I mean, I think we're really proud of some of the things that we've, we've um, accomplished in Tucson. And sometimes I think we're a little aghast at some of the things we've done as well. But you know, it's, it's, it's our pleasure to bring the news to you each and every day. And we're so appreciative that you read us, that you think of us and that you've joined us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And I think we all um, feel very similar to you, Debbie. But we appreciate you all for being subscribers and for being here. Um, just quickly, a little preview of what we have coming up, ne up next week for our chat. We actually have Ellis Luders joining us, who is the new food reporter for This is Tucson and the Arizona Daily Star. So even though she's fairly new to her position, she has hit the ground running. Um, so we're going to uh, talk to her a little bit about what her goals are. We're going to talk about the food scene in Tucson. I think we all have an inner foodie inside of us, so it's something we can all enjoy and appreciate. So we look forward to having her and getting to know her more. Um, excuse me, but we thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you again next week. And thank you again to all of our guests and hope you all have a good rest of your day.